So iPhone mirroring officially comes to beta users today with the release of iOS 18 beta 2 and macOS Sequoia beta 2. Let's talk about it. How's it going folks? Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. So you can see I have my iPhone and my Mac both running the latest betas, Mac OS Sequoia and iOS 18 beta 2. You'll find the iPhone mirroring application in either the application folder, or you can open up a launch pad and search for it there. I have it in my dock right now. So I'm just gonna launch it. And if it's your first launch, you're gonna be greeted with this nice splash screen, sort of illustrating and telling you what you can expect from iPhone mirroring. So it gives you quick access to your iPhone's apps and the content within those apps. And it works just simply by clicking on your trackpad. You can also view and act on notifications. And there's no need to reach for your phone uh, because it's all done wirelessly, which is really cool. So just click continue and you're gonna see this. It's gonna ask you to unlock your phone. So this establishes a trust relationship with your Mac. So you wanna enter your passcode in there. And once you do that, you'll see this screen, which says iPhone mirroring is ready to use. And at the bottom, it gives you some nitty gritty details like your microphone and camera aren't accessible. We'll talk more about that in a few, but first you're gonna see this screen that says iPhone mirroring is locked. Now to unlock it, you have to either use Touch ID or enter your Mac's password. So is this required every time you want to establish an iPhone mirroring session? Well, yes, if that's the way you want it to be. But you can also authenticate automatically. I'll show you that a little bit later and what that involves. But here it is. This is my iPhone being mirrored to my Mac wirelessly. So this iPhone could be in another room completely, for instance. Yeah, I do. I, I exaggerate a lot. So I'm playing YouTube right now. I mean, you're excited. I'm telling you. Yeah. And yes, you the exciting. audio is in sync. Yeah, that is it's playing the back thing video I've seen on this platform, period. It almost looks like I'm just holding my phone in front of me. Spatial photos. So what you do is you open up the photos app, pretty much any photo, like even like screenshots of photos it'll work with. Like That's it doesn't have to be a photo. Like anything. It could be an old anything. Like, 1950s photo too. And pretty impressive stuff. To an extent. It's you can like, access the dynamic better, island as well. I think it's better quality. So that was the nine to five Mac overtime podcast. If you haven't subscribed to that, be sure to do so. You can find the link down below in the description. Wait. Fun times we have on that. So this is the iPhone mirroring experience. You can open pretty much all of your apps, browse the content, interact with your apps, read, listen, watch. You can even copy and paste. So you just double click. Use the little drag handles there and use command C on your keyboard, or you can just copy like this by right clicking and then pasting command V like that. Now, if you move your cursor above the iPhone screen, you'll notice the Chrome appears and that is going to reveal a couple of options. For instance, to go back to the home screen, there's a button there for that. That's handy. And there's also a button for the app switcher. So those appear right in the Chrome above the actual iPhone mirroring interface, just like that. You can also kill an app with the app switcher open just like that. So to move the interface, you have to use that Chrome as well, because obviously clicking on the iPhone screen is just interacting with the iPhone. But if you go up to the view menu, you'll see there's other ways to access these various commands for home screen, app switcher, and spotlight. So command one, two, and three. So here we are, command one to go back to the home screen, command two to open up the app switcher, and then command three to open up spotlight search. Now you can also swipe down with two fingers to invoke spotlight from the home screen. Now what about when face ID is required to interact with an application? For instance, I can lock an app behind face ID in iOS 18, well, basically, it's going to ask you to authenticate using your Mac's password or using Touch ID, just like this. So that is how you interact with something that's locked behind Face ID. All right, so let's go ahead and close out of the iPhone mirroring session. You can see that disappears from the 
paired iPhone. Let's launch it again. And you can see now it's wanting to verify again. I'm just using Touch ID. But what if I don't want it to do that every time? What if I just wanted to connect? Well, go up to iPhone mirroring, go to settings. You're going to see this. Ask every time. That's how it's currently configured. Or automatically authenticate. So you're going to put in your max password. Click OK. So going forward with this setting enabled, it will automatically authenticate. So you're not going to have to enter in your max password or authenticate with touch ID. It also tells you that if you want to change the iPhone that's actually being paired, you can do so within max settings. We'll show you that in a second, but here I am launching iPhone mirroring. Notice no authentication because it's done automatically. So you're giving up a little bit of security for the convenience of having it automatically connect. All right, so here's another thing to keep in mind with iPhone mirroring, microphone and camera access are unavailable. So you're not going to be able to use camera hardware from the iPhone and you're not going to be able to use the iPhone's microphone either to pick up sound. Now, if you start typing from like the home screen, you're going to notice that it's going to try to unlock your phone with the passcode if you start putting in numbers. So just something to keep in mind, but let me show you the microphone error message that it gives you when you try to use voice memos. So you can see there, your iPhone's microphone is not available from Mac, which is a good thing for security purposes. Now here's something else to keep in mind about iPhone mirroring. Your iPhone must stay locked during the session. Otherwise it will disconnect your iPhone mirroring session on your Mac. So your iPhone has to stay locked in order to use iPhone mirroring. So all you do is lock it again and then click retry and then it'll reconnect just like that. And once you unlock your phone after a mirroring session, you're going to actually get a little warning that tells you it was previously connected to iPhone mirroring on your Mac. So that can give you a heads up. If someone tried to connect on the sly, well, it'll warn you that your iPhone was used from your Mac. Now in AirPlay and continuity settings and settings general, you're going to see your actual connection to the MacBook or the Mac that is running Mac OS Sequoia. You can delete that connection if you want to do that. And also within the settings in desktop and dock on Mac OS, you're going to see the actual iPhone that you're connected to. If you have multiple iPhones, you can choose which one you want to establish the connection with. So you may be wondering, Jeff, what about control center? What about notification center? Well, we already established that notification center is not accessible, but what about control center? Well, you can of course invoke control center from the iPhone itself, but you're not going to be able to interact with control center at all from your Mac using the iPhone mirroring session. And again, no notification center access. Another interesting thing is that your iPhone will not unlock while the mirroring session is enabled when you wake your device, right? You actually have to invoke an unlock for it to unlock, but you know how normally when you're not using mirroring, you just wake your device and you look at it and it unlocks. Well, that doesn't work like that while the mirroring session is enabled. It'll stay locked unless you swipe up to force an unlock, which is a good thing because otherwise your mirroring session would be interrupted. So it's just a way to prevent that from happening. Now, notifications are also available from your iPhone right there on your Mac within Mac OS's notification center. If you click on that, you can actually interact with that. It'll take you directly to the area in that app that pertains to that notification. Really cool. Now, if you go to settings and you go to notification, you're going to find here an option to show in iPhone mirroring. So if there's an app that you don't want its notifications to display within iPhone mirroring on Mac, you can disable that. And if you go to settings notifications within Mac OS, you'll also see a notifications from iPhone section where you can enable or disable various applications. So that's pretty cool. So here's a notification from X that I can just click on it and it loads right up to that DM just like that. Let me try that again. Oh, you also saw there when you click the little uh, home home indicator at the bottom of the screen, I should have mentioned this at first, but it will go back to the home screen. I think I may have mentioned that, but maybe I didn't. All right. So we got a couple of more notifications. You can see those in notification center grouped. Just click it to expose all of them and then click the notification 
that you're interested in, just like that. And just for emphasis, yes, you can click that home indicator to get back to the home screen. Now, here's something really cool. Normally, no, you cannot use iPhone mirroring within Vision OS on the Apple Vision Pro because the Mac virtual display is basically a sidecar session and sidecar does not work alongside iPhone mirroring. But if you use a wired connection via the Apple Vision Pro developer strap, then you can use iPhone mirroring within Vision OS. So now you have Vision OS, you have Mac OS, and you have iOS all running more or less in the same window. Pretty cool. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Jeff Benjamin. If you appreciate videos like this, be sure to subscribe. And if you really liked it, give it a thumbs up. That helps other people find this video. Oh, and by the way, check out these other two videos that I think you might like. Thanks for watching.